One great thing about putting creative work out into the world is you tend to connect with other creative folks. What's especially wonderful is when they like your stuff well enough that they want to see you draw things they themselves have come up with. So that's what we're doing today. Pewter City Gym's YouTube comment suggestions. Stick with me till the end for a fun way to get in on this. Hey there trainers, welcome! We're drawing some stuff that you guys have asked for. I do my best to reply and react to each and every comment I get on any of my videos, and sometimes that starts a conversation or invites a suggestion where someone puts out an idea. I can't draw all of these, but I figured that every so often it would be neat to pick up a couple and draw them out. If you want in on the fun, I would encourage you to subscribe. It is always appreciated, and it really helps me out. Liking the video and of course making a comment is always a great option too. If you make fake them on suggestions, you may even see them featured in a video at some point. Remember, trainer, you are welcome here. Alright, let's get started. Our first monster was suggested by a great creator and buddy of mine, Boreal Mind. Link to her channel in the description, of course. Uh, back when I did my regional cat video, she made a comment suggesting a few alternative evolutions for it. Palper evolves in various ways when leveled up with a collar containing an item from the Pokemon world. Video link is in the description as well. Boreal suggested a bunch of evolutions. All were really great ideas, and I wanted to do at least one, but which one to pick? It all kind of came down to Boreal herself. Now, you guys might not know this. It's a bit of insider information that I picked up only by carefully figuring out obscure clues and piecing together the most hard to spot indications, but um, she likes edgy skeleton stuff. Don't worry, that's totally original. I've never done an edgy skeleton fake ever before. Totally unique idea here. So I picked the evolution that requires the rare bone item. Buy this collar for your Palper and this is what you get. All of the evolutions for Palper follow a pretty similar design philosophy. A Sphinx cat wearing an elemental item and a piece of clothing with socks and muzzle to match color-wise. This is gonna be a ghost type evolution. I crossed the bones under the chin to reference both pirates and the deadly symbol used to indicate something that's poisonous. The clothing is a dark gray hood, like either a grim reaper or just someone hiding in the relative safety of their hooded sweater. I gave it the grumpy cat mouth too, uh, unlike the generally cheerful expressions of all the other members of this line. He's just a surly little guy who wants to use shadow ball and nightshade and be left alone to sleep in a dark corner. And here we have Spekpur, the ghost story Pokemon. Spekpur are nocturnal evolutions of Palper who love to shroud themselves in shadow. While most of Palper's evolutions are quite outgoing, Spekpur is a little more shy. Once bonded to a trainer they trust, however, they are just as affectionate as Palper and its other evolved forms. Like all the other kitties in this line, it's a fairy type, and as mentioned before, that comes with a side dish of spooky. Its abilities are either Overcoat, which protects it from weather effects, or the hidden ability Adaptability, which powers up moves of the same type. Here are your stats and moves. It's a special defense specialist and also relatively fast. Moves are a pretty standard set for this line with a good mix of ghost and fairy type moves. Where would you get these guys? Well, you can buy Palper at five different locations for 12,000 Poke Yen a pop. These aren't Pokemon that you can find in the wild. You can buy one of the evolution collars, including the rare bone collar, for an additional 5,000 Poke Yen. Boreal, I hope you like this edgy skeleton cat. Next set of designs are one of the many, many suggestions given to me by Julia Habuda. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, anyway, Julia has made a bunch of great suggestions on both videos and community posts with lists of different Fakemon that they would like to see. Honestly, there's a bunch that I'd like to take a swing at, but this one kind of caught my eye right away. A Grass Dragon regional variant of Gumi and its evolutions based on the Banana Slug. If you're unfamiliar, Banana Slugs are big yellow slugs that produce a super viscous slime. They actually can be found in California too, so I thought how perfect for the solar region. However, I didn't want to make just a yellow version of Gumi and call it a day. I did a little browsing around, and did you know that there is a yellow nudibranch often called the Pikachu nudibranch? Nudibranchs are a sea slug, so I wanted to add in some of those elements too. Yellow slugs of the world unite. Then, when I was thinking about the best use for bananas, uh, the, uh, the banana split. It all kind of came together into this weird combination of features that I immediately fell in love with. So, regular Gumi is a really simple design. It's a little wet slug monster that lives in puddles and callus. Likewise, this design is a very simple one. I wanted it to look like a banana sitting in some melted vanilla ice cream. I grabbed colors from Tropius's bananas and Vanillite's ice cream along with the pink of Cherubi to look like the big maraschino cherries for cheeks. It's got a little chocolate drizzle on the back to look like Pikachu's backstripes as well. Colosi and Gumi is a goofy little guy and I wanted to maintain its cheerful look but maybe a little less squishy. 
bit more rigid and a bit more structured. And here we have Solarian Gumi, the soft tissue Pokemon. Solarian Gumi are very popular with trainers who love the look of Pikachu. Because Pikachu is so hard to get in Sol as it's not native, many youngster trainers will instead take care of Gumi. These small dragons secrete a high fructose mucus which is delicious but has an unpleasant slimy texture. This stage is Dragon and Grass. Gooey is your primary ability. This lowers an attacker's speed every time it makes contact with Gumi. You could also get one with Cheek Pouch. This gives back more HP when a health berry is consumed. The hidden ability is Super Sweet Syrup for obvious reasons. On to stats and moves, and yeah, Gumi is still the weakest possible dragon type Pokemon. Its moves don't differ too much from regular Gumi either, with a few notable grass and fairy type exceptions. At level 40, Gumi evolves into Sligu. Solarian Sligu is honestly not that big of a departure from Gumi. It gains a big old scoop of strawberry ice cream on its back to emulate the shell shape of standard Sligu. Fun fact about me, snails and turtles are my favorite animals, so I actually really love the Gumi line overall. I wanted to make this guy look a little bit more mobile, like it's a fast-moving snail, because that's just a fun concept for me. I used the colors of the old ghetto for the chocolatey brown accents too, which seemed fitting, and I used all Creamy's colors for the other ice cream flavors. Um, there are a lot more than three or four colors on this line, and I don't apologize for it. And here we have Solarian Sligu the soft tissue Pokemon. Sligu and Sola are a common sight on the beach. They tend to live in and around tide pools and drink salt water. While they can move relatively fast on land, they do so clumsily and are actually much happier swimming in warm, shallow water. The mucus they produce is rich in flavor while being gross in texture. You, uh... You have to wonder who the first Solarian person was to see a slimy slug Pokemon and think to themselves, I am going to eat some of that goop. Anyway, this guy is now Dragon Fairy type. Confectionery and fairy typing go together like bananas and ice cream. Uh, because this fellow was more forward with the frozen dessert influence, it seemed logical. Abilities remain unchanged. Oh, and the shinies for these guys are inspired by Nana Berries, being kind of the closest thing the Pokemon world has to bananas other than Tropius' neck fruits, as well as Spumoni ice cream. Again, stats and moves remain relatively constant between forms. Next, of course, comes Gudra. I had so much fun with this guy. Uh, one thing I love about Gudra in general is that it gets this really soft, sweet face coming off of Sligu's more goofy expression. I definitely wanted to keep that, and I just wanted this monster to have a sense of whimsy to it. I ramped up the ice cream elements, giving it not only a snail shell scoop of strawberry, but big puffy scoops of what I imagine to be frozen custard for thighs. Does anyone else look at that flavor of all creamy and think it looks like frozen custard with like berry swirls? No, just me? Uh, okay. I also added chopped nuts to the back because at this point, why wouldn't I? And here we have Solarian Gudra, the banana split Pokemon. Gudra and Sola are fairly rare and often sought after by dragon tamer trainers. Their fairly unique typing makes them quite the status symbol. Gudra doesn't care about this, of course, and usually finds the attention it gets to be a bit overwhelming. They can tuck their whole body into the soft shell they carry on their backs. The taste and texture of the secretions they produce is divine when served ice cold. The typing remains Dragon Fairy with abilities unchanged. It definitely gets quite a bit larger, though. In terms of stats and moves, stats remain relatively constant. As for moves, I borrowed a few from Diplin and Hydrapple because they just make a lot of sense. So where in Sola would you find these guys? A couple of spots. As mentioned in Sligu's Dex entry, they'd be available along the coast and along with that, you could find them in the coniferous forest of the wild areas to the north, though that'd be a slightly rarer encounter there. You wouldn't find wild Gudra, though. To get the fully evolved monster, you'd need to head out into an area of Sola that gets snow. The mountain range within this wild area would be one place. Once your Sligu hits level 55 in the snowy weather, it will attain its final form. Julia, I know that I went a little bit off prompt, but I still hope that you enjoy it. Designing this thing was uh, some of the best fun that I've had in a long time, so I really hope that you like it. Okay, last mono of the video. Actually, it comes from the same video as the first monster we designed, Palper's video. It's a comment by Bents. Before I get into his comment though, I wanted to show this fan art he did of Chillichum. He had a pretty cool idea about NPCs having Pokemon that are a little different than the norm. Maybe they wear a piece of clothing or have some other cosmetic difference. Anyway, he drew Chillichum with this little bandage on its leg because in the robotic Pokemon video I did, I told the tale of breaking a toy robot's leg by accident on Christmas morning. Uh, anyway, this little guy's nickname is Robuddy and his trainer lets him help out at parties by providing ice to all the guests. Thanks again so much for the great fan art, Bents. I love it. So, the comment was suggesting a catfish Pokemon based on Meowth. Being that Meowth is 
almost like a C-tier Pokemon mascot behind Pikachu and Eevee, and has been used twice to illustrate the regional variant concept, I think it's a pretty important Pokemon, and so I just couldn't resist this idea. I have a little albino bristlenose catfish by the name of Shenron in my aquarium. He's just a goofy little guy that roams around the tank snacking on algae, old leaves, and snail eggs. Uh, please don't pass that last menu option onto Solarian Gudra. It would probably be kind of upset. But anyway, I based my design on it. This was a pretty simple combination of concepts. I wouldn't say it's exactly a convergent, though. I think they're a little too different looking for that, but you can easily see where I borrowed Meowth's design conventions for this little fish. The original comment suggested the term catfishing be tied into the concept as well. Maybe this Fakemon lies around in a river, looking like a waterlogged Meowth, and then when people or Pokemon head on down to investigate, it strikes. I could kind of see it honestly. Anyway, pretty standard Meowth coloring except for the pearl on its forehead. Being that I named my goofy little fish Shenron, I wanted to do a little orange ball. No stars on it, but yeah. Uh, anyway, here we have Meowsh the catfish Pokemon. Meowsh imitate distressed Meowth in shallow waterways. When people or Pokemon come to investigate, they leap up and attack, hoping to get an easy meal out of their ruse. They're usually pretty lazy Pokemon and can only muster up any kind of energy if there's food on the line. Types are water and normal. I figured this was a pretty good combination for a creature like this. For abilities, you have Damp, which prevents the use of self-destruct type moves, Gluttony, which encourages the early use of a held berry, and the hidden ability is Rain Dish, which heals a little HP during rainy weather. Its size and weight are very much like Meowths to further emulate the feline Pokemon. Here are your stats and moves. Nothing too crazy as this is just a first stage in a two stage line. A range of normal and water type moves and a few status moves to emphasize its tricky nature. You'd find these guys pretty much all over the region in little rivers and streams. If you see a Meowth in the water and go to investigate, it would always be this guy. Still, it should probably evolve, right? And that's where you come in. If you've watched this far into the video, it is very much appreciated. Do me a favor though. If you can think of a fun way for Meowsh to evolve, drop it in a comment below. I'll pick one that I really like, and I'll draw it out at some point in the future before featuring it in a video like this one. Of course, if you have other things you'd like to see me draw, you're always welcome to drop them in a comment as well. Uh, no guarantees or anything, of course, but if it's a fun idea that sparks joy, I might just pick it up and draw it. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video, trainers. I'm very much looking forward to catching you in the next one, but till then, take care. Bye.